So today I wanted to take a look at why I really prioritize fixing vulnerabilities when it comes to tool assessments rather than finding them. I'm going to go ahead and just do that by loading up a Docker image here that I use in my insecure testing repo that's linked below. In this repo, it's really important to know how a Docker file is being created. You'll notice first we're starting from the open source Ubuntu 20.04, and that from command, we'll just look up in Docker Hub here, that this 20.04 tag is the supported tag that we're looking at first. So every time this image gets rebuilt, it's going to take the latest 20.04 version, which will include any patches that were rolled up in that version. So that's the first thing to be aware of is that sometimes patching a vulnerability can be as simple as grabbing the latest version of the affected repository. And sometimes there are vulnerabilities here that are not fixed. From there, I am setting up an environment variable and then I am doing an apt update. I am installing Python and some other stuff to make it so that I have some intentionally insecure things I'm doing with this. Instead, I could be using the default Python image, but I chose not to do that here because I'm trying to set some things up in a weird way which is not at all uncommon. Then I'm making my application directory, installing Flask, and running my application. So this is a pretty standard Docker image uh, that you might see. Usually there's a couple other things getting installed here. So here, this is pretty standard the way that it will show you vulnerabilities, what's happening. And I just want to highlight why when you give a developer a vulnerability ticket, it's so hard to understand what's happening. You have some vulnerabilities here coming in from the base image. This is the medium and low. So these vulnerabilities are never going to be fixable by me because I'm not unless I bump to a new major version or do a pretty big update. Let's just take this as an example where we are looking at this Moby vulnerability. It's what I should probably focus on because it's showing up, of course, as critical, the most high. Everything would indicate that I should be freaking out and looking at this. But instead, I have to figure out, OK, Moby is coming in as a result of this long command. So hold on, where am I actually pulling it in from? And if I look at the command, it is not at all clear where that's coming from. And I don't know what it is or why it's there. And so the odds, first of all, that I'm even vulnerable to whatever this is saying is already pretty low given the context of the container. But of course, we'd have to look into it to really know. But the first thing I have to do with these tools is come over here to see that Moby build kit is actually a part of the docker plugin used specifically for docker compose which i'm not even using in this project and so right off the bat we're on like this crazy witch hunt for what should be a 9.8 absolutely critical freak out severity when it's for a vulnerability that i don't even know if i use i don't know if i'm really affected by it probably not so i have to dig into this cve which tells me very specific things about the way that BuildKit works. So I have to dig into this uh, GitHub advisory to try to figure out what is going on with this. And basically, it seems like what the vulnerability is trying to tell me is that it's possible to interact with the build before it is completed. So finally, I am able to research enough to realize that this is the leaky vessels thing that Sneak published, and really, of all the short summary CVEs, there's no way uh, none of those short articles really gave me the context necessary to, to figure out if I am vulnerable to this in the context of my Docker image, if this is something I need to patch urgently, which again, this is showing up in the scanner as a 9.8 critical, critical vulnerability uh, with the system. So it is giving me every indication that I should, but eventually, once I read all of the uh, how to set it up, how the how the vulnerability was discovered, which there's shorter articles that really did not give me what I needed to know, which wasn't even like none of this stuff really matters until you get down to uh, where they start to show you how they exploited a race condition to break out from the context. And so from what I understand, which again, this stuff is super complicated and I haven't dug into it a ton beyond just the time recording this video, it's if an attacker has access to a Docker file on a system that is using BuildKit, and they they can then inject things into that Docker file, and then when it builds, they can escape the context of the container. So to exploit this in a real-world environment, someone would need to have access already to maybe somewhere where you're building images, somewhere where you're publishing them within your CI/CD pipeline. And if if this vulnerability is discovered in that context, it really is a pretty high severity vulnerability 
especially if you don't have great controls limiting who has access, uh, what API keys are there. Um, really, there's a lot of things that could be exploited from this. But for my context, where my Docker file is just installing Docker for almost no reason, where it's just there as something in an intentionally insecure way for someone to exploit, but someone might have Docker there, uh, not because people are building images or even have the ability to build images, but maybe they've implemented some anti-pattern with uh, accessing Docker daemon type things from the running container. Really, the the nature of this exploit changes pretty drastic in terms of the severity. But really what I want to highlight is if this showed up, because it's going to show up on any image with Docker on it. And so if, if I had that across my environment and then I use some kind of automation to automatically start blocking builds or start dropping tickets for everyone, I would have immediately created a million tickets. So now that we've spent all that time researching the vulnerability, let's take a look at if we can fix it. I will first go in here and I'm just going to go ahead and build the Docker file. So now I'm just rebuilding the Docker file. I did not change anything. I'm just rerunning the build command. All right. So the image has completed. I can go back into Docker here and see this newer image is just the version I made of it. And let's see if that vulnerability is still there. Oh, look at that. It's gone. And I just want to highlight why people get so frustrated is if I start clicking into this, it tells me that the fix is to bump the version of this without telling me that it's a dependency on Docker. So it's made me waste all this time looking into the vulnerability, looking into what's installing it, looking into where it's coming from, trying to reverse engineer the whole thing, when all I had to do was run the Docker build command, which is why nightly builds are so important, and the vulnerability is gone. It's like magic. It's like if someone had just told me to rerun the build command, I could have fixed almost all my vulnerabilities. And this is why this prioritization discussion drives me absolutely insane, is because no amount of filtering, this is fixable, not fixable, this is internet facing, not internet facing, this CVE has been super exploited, it's been somewhat exploited, What's the context of it? Can I filter out Windows vulns? None of that stuff actually addresses the issue, which is that this libc thing, standard libc for that older version, is coming from freaking Docker, which is on the latest version. And so there's nothing I can do here. Basically, I just wasted a ton of time when a good enough security posture is just doing this, where like I am grabbing the latest versions of all of these tools and I'm rebuilding this. And if I was just nightly building this image and better yet using like the Python base image so that I'm not using like custom installed stuff, that's a better security posture than any amount of CVE scanning and tickets and prioritization. None of these platforms are actually built to help people fix things. They're all built instead to just give you all these random dashboards and filters, which is not the real issue. These vulnerabilities won't get fixed because it's too hard and time consuming and such a waste of developer time to have me sit here all day and try to cross reference what is pulling these in. Oh, look, it's more Docker stuff that I can't do anything about. What about these ones? Oh, only fixable. All right, where's this? What's this one coming in from? This is coming from the Python 3 install. But if I go to the Python 3 install, you can see the way I'm installing it is just grabbing the latest. There's no update available. It doesn't matter. And so between the amount of these that are false positives and the amount of these that aren't actually fixable, the only thing that I want a tool to do is to tell me, hey, you should update your Python 3. If I had this pinned to a specific version, say this was pinned to 3. whatever 7, then go ahead and say, tell me to update that or tell me to update what other dependency or tell me to bump the Ubuntu version. And this is where the base layer detection is half of what matters. So when I'm evaluating tools, I look for this base image detection because 90% of the time, this is getting you what you want as far as you need to bump minor versions on in Ubuntu, since they don't minor version their stuff like this, it's a lot easier to just let this ride. But for other packages, you might use like a minor version. Let's say that I was supporting this Docker file that you're using in your insecure app deployments here where it's using latest, let's say I wanted to now update this, that's where um, maybe you had this pinned and then sneak or whatever tool would tell you to update the base image to the latest version. But this stuff, just tell me where it's coming from. 
And what's crazy about all this is it tells the tools tell you. They tell you in the package path where it's coming from, but they don't roll it up by it, which is just totally insane to me. Because if anyone actually tried to fix a vulnerability instead of just report on them endlessly, that would be the first thing that you would want is to show where to fix the install. So all this to say, it's my hope to have shown you that fixing vulnerabilities is usually between two things where people either totally ignore it because they don't understand why developers don't want to do it and developers don't want to do it because they don't get enough information from the tool to make fixing easy. And 90% of these are false positives, not because of any filtering or exploits available or whatever, but they're false positives because just because there's an exploit of the standard library, it's not exploited in the context of Docker. There's no published exploit of this CVE that is showing a file path that's specifically about Windows file paths. Why am I even seeing this CVE when it's in the context of a Docker vulnerability? And so it's just totally, in this context, it's totally pointless. But we'll all get reports on it. We'll all get our little CVEs here that we can't patch or do anything about. And either we flag it and ignore it and go through this for hundreds of thousands of vulnerabilities, or we just ignore it and don't do anything. This is why vulnerability scanning sucks. And this is why I'm so tired of hearing about prioritization instead of what actually matters, which is giving people the information they need to fix vulnerabilities. So if you're on a security team, don't just dump tickets to your developers. Try to make them in a way that makes sense. And if you're a developer, try to be patient because understand that our tools really suck at doing this. This base image thing is the best fix half of your vulnerabilities because it's telling you, but the rest of this stuff is going to be just awful most of the time. So I spent 40 minutes, almost an hour of the raw footage just trying to research, figure out what a particular CVE, I, d I dug deep into two of them. And really the only thing I could do to fix all of the vulnerabilities that were discovered was to just redeploy my image and get the latest versions of all the packages that I was using. Everything else was really outside of my control since I was already running latest across the board on the image. Once I actually knew what to do to fix things, it took less than two minutes to get it redeployed and fixed versus the hour that it took to just research two CVEs. So imagine I was a developer and I received 50 tickets or I had to sort through 100 CVEs or I had to go one by one was my expectation for my security team to argue for why a particular CVE was good or bad. At the end of the day, I did everything I could in under two minutes. And if I understood that just from the tool, there wouldn't be a vulnerability overload problem because I would know exactly what I needed to do to fix things.